Say something, say something in chat if you see this. And I think, I think we got it this time. Pray to the internet gods. <laughs> okay, so far, at least it's not spinning around and saying chat is uh, chat connecting to chat. So we're, we're, we got that good. Anyway, I'm gonna check um, to see if my overhead cam needs adjusting a little bit while I wait for chat to catch up. There is a little bit of a delay. So give me some emotes if you see this and if everything all looks good. All right, here's this. I'm gonna adjust my settings just a tiny bit. So, so far I'm not seeing anyone say anything to that. That doesn't mean that I'm not live yet. I have to read stuff off the box. Let me see what the bot has to say. Ah, oh, there we go, Jimmy G. Let's hit. Awesome, we got it. All right, yay! All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut that other window down because we don't need that. We need my bot open. Hang on a second. This. We can get the bot back up and running. Oh, there was a skip frame. I just saw a skip frame. Can we just please have some good stream today? Here we go. That. All right, Phantom, Phantom Bot Control. Panel. It's on. Here we go. All right. I think we're set. Hi, Jimmy G. Hi, Walt. I'm sorry about the hiccups in the beginning. We will persevere. Cam overhead. I'm going to adjust my settings real quick so that everyone can see this model really well, because I had to, my stupid OBS always, um, hey Rumble, hi, my good one, thank you for the host. What my set my settings get completely redone every time I start my stream, it's such a hassle. Let's do, let's do game. But there we go, you can see her really well now, good. All right, so this is the Spider Silk Assassin from Kingdom Death. Got a lot of skin on her. They are um, sponsoring these the models for this for this demo. So give a big thank you, Kingdom Death. I've got my little shamrock nails today. Little shamrock. Can you see it? Oh. And I have my references. Good. Yes, looking good now. Awesome. So let's talk. Let's talk about ethnic skin tones on models and why everybody finds it so difficult which I think I see why. When you're coming at this from a mini painting standpoint, you think out of the bottle, I'm gonna paint a skin tone. And so you grab your fleshy colored skin tone, right? And it looks like a plastic doll. And you know that I don't paint, I don't paint like out of the bottle, usually. I'll always mix, I'll always add, I glaze, I underpaint, because skin is transparent, and that goes for all skin types. There's a transparency. Now, the more melanin that you have, the less transparent, but you still have layers, and you still have undertones to your skin, even if you have darker skin. So when you are painting ethnic skin, I want you to think of, think of your painting and your model in terms of those layers. And you're going to be building those layers in order to get a really nice realistic skin tone. Now the cool thing about this technique is that if you're paying attention to what I'm teaching you, you can paint any color skin tone. Right? And I just found a big cat here right on the top of my hat. <laughs> Don't mean to upset you, but she's you're jumping and pausing again. No, that's okay. Music is loud. How is the music even loud? Hold on. So we're just having a bad day. Maybe we have to... Mine is okay, Rumples is okay. Well, but, and it does show that I, I skipped a frame. I skipped a couple frames. It says 15% over two minutes. I'll tell you what, that's why I'm gonna talk 
If we can't get this go through, you're gonna reset yours to see if it's you. Does any, has anybody else had a problem? I think I turned down the desktop audio, by the way. Let me know if, if you can hear it okay. Okay, I'm good on your end. No what, Jamie G? There's a delay, so I don't know what you're saying no to. Said a bunch of things in, in the meantime. Currently, you're fine. Okay. Well, like I said, we're gonna talk a little bit anyway before we get into tu tutorial. Give this stream a chance to stabilize because I really want this to do good. If we don't, if it doesn't go, it is a, if it doesn't go forward, we're gonna we're gonna wait until Friday and do a Friday. It'll be okay. Sister Mary Napalm, you're fine. Good. All right. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna start right. Otherwise, trying to sacrifice something, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sacrifice to the, na the napalm gods, right? All right, so let's take a look at out of the bottle. It says flesh, but guess what? Flesh isn't just white. And so we're gonna paint some brown and some burgundy and some ochre and some mahogany kind of flesh beautiful dark beautiful brown kinds of flesh okay so notice that i'm not priming my model green and that's because the verdaccio skin tone method where i i prime green and i paint the caucasian because that is using a color theory technique that allows the green shadows to kind of desaturate the pink skin tones you might be able to do this green with some of the lighter browns and lighter ethnic skin tones but for the most part i don't use green i will use a darker color like a burgundy or even what do i like to use i really like a burgundy these are pro this is probably my main go-to bases and the reason why is look at all the red in there and when i'm looking at my ethnic skin tone especially for the darker look at how much red is in the shadows so this is this guy is a more brown skin tone and you can see if you look at his shadows what are they they're more in the blue color and that's because his overtone the main color if you were to look at just this color right here what color is it it's orange it's orangey right there and so I've got some blues in the shadows there's even a kind of a yellow ochre right there okay this is an Asian skin tone now this is going to be very similar to Caucasian but instead of using the peachier branch of the colors you're going to be using the more ochreys and browns there's there's peach see there's peach here there's peach in there and on the eyelid on the nose places where blood is closest to the you know capillaries are close to the skin but like this this is an like ivory this is maybe like a hand hand color this is like a looks like maybe a brown definitely a brown right here there is a little bit of blue and green in the shadows you can kind of see it was you you <laughs> mark <laughs> Was any, did it jump for anybody else? I did say that I've skipped a frame, so it's not completely just you. Now look at this. Now obviously this person, John Singleton Copley, used a yellow base, and the yellow is coming out in the highlights. But that's, that's a whole different thing. Everything else is these, this is a very monochrome version of painting, and he's, this is a good example of how to show highlights on darker skin. All right, this is a really good example. So this is from the video, How to Paint Dark Skin Tones Oil Painting, uploaded by Patrice Robinson. And I just want to point out, what is the main color here? It's like an orangey color, isn't it? And then if we go further, close here, this is sort of a burnt sienna. Kind of a reddish tone there's that burgundy and then this is really burgundy and notice what it's not notice what color there's some black on this but notice what this is not this is not 
just brown and especially this color brown is a little bit on the chalky side so when it dries it dries really flat so you want to add your your burgundies and your oranges so watch when that dries it will dry pretty flat got some reds in it you can see the reds in it we might have to use that that's dark umber maybe i was thinking of this one this one is black brown yeah this one is really chalky kind of like right. put a little bit on this yeah you might use this in the really deepest recesses but i like to use some reds and stuff with that okay mm. One of the things with ethnic skid tones is get references. Get your references. Don't just try to paint a recipe out of the bottle. There are a million different shades, as I've shown you with these different examples, of different colors of ethnic skin tones. We're gonna to be primarily focusing on the um, the people from you know the African um, background, African American, African. This is, I love this example so much. And the reason why I love this example, you can go on, uh, it's on DeviantArt, and this is dark skin tones. And this is a digital um, thing here. And it talks about, it says that the main thing to keep in mind when painting darker skin is those more reflect, the, that it's more reflective than light skin. And if you look here closely, these highlights are really small and really bright compared to the rest of the skin. So all of these other colors are completely different. And I love how there's greens, there's purples. I love how there's all different colors and it makes this really beautiful. Thank you for calling Bebuzz2280. I appreciate your follow, welcome. So let's just look real quick through the examples that I've got of black skin tones. And we've got this gal, this is not a good print she's definitely on the more darker end of the scale but she's also got kind of crazy blue lighting that is affecting things this is i think this might be a watercolor or an oil and i just love this because it really shows off the oranges and there's some peach in here a little bit browns love that color this one is much more orangey the other thing I suggest when you're painting ethnic skin tones is to go watch oil painting tutorials that are by the people who are the same color that they're painting. It really makes a difference if you're trying to educate yourself on colors because, you know, everyone knows how to paint what they know, right? Like I paint female skin better than I paint male skin because I know what I look like. I look at myself every day. So if you're, if you're African American or if you're, you know, of brown skin tones, you're going to be looking at that every day. You're going to have a better clue of how to paint those skin tones than somebody who is not. And so if you're not that skin tone, go watch people on YouTube. Go watch makeup tutorials. You will learn a lot about how to paint your minis if you are scared of ever, you know, trying things, making things look like a plastic doll. This guy is a completely different color. But if you look actually from a distance, you can start seeing the oranges right around here. Okay, there's Asian. I'm definitely noticing a little bit more blue, a little kind of a tiny bit of green from the olive in that. And this guy has quite a bit of olive undertones. Yeah. All right. So. I think I'm going to use something like this for my reference. So I'm going to, reason why I started the model with gray, because everybody has gray and black primer. Or if you don't have, you have white, you mix a gray. But I started with black with a gray, so we have something neutral to begin with. But if I were painting this my own, on my own, um, I may, I may, there's, um, 
Final Res Ebony Flesh is really nice, um, but I wouldn't, again, I would, I'm not trying to teach you with something like this. I want to teach you to, to build up from scratch a skin tone, an ebony skin tone. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some burgundy. Let's use this one, Bur mahogany. I'm going to put this on my skin or on my palette, my skin tone palette. I think I will go ahead and use the dark umber if I need it. And um, a little bit of the black brown. I don't think I'm gonna need as much of that. I might use that for dark lining. We'll see. I want to show you the differences between these three colors. This one has a lot of green in it. So when you're mixing browns, red and brown make, make a, red and green make brown. So this brown has more green in it. This brown has more red in it. This is burgundy, which is basically a red and a black, right? And then I'm going to use a tiny bit of burnt red because I don't know if I'm going to need it, but I want to make a full palette. I'm just going to put a little bit of that because, looky here, on my example, there's a bright orange, but some of the shadows I might need to mix some of the with some of that bright burnt red with my browns. And actually, let me pick a different reference because that has, that has about four or five. Here, let's use her. I like her. So yeah, she does have some of that burnt red, but it's thin. You can tell like by, if you were to call, call this a miniature, um, there would be glazes of that burnt red in there. Please ask questions during this. This is basically the demo for my class at Adepticon. So the more you ask questions in here, the better I'm gonna be able to teach my classes in the future and at Adepticon. There's my burnt orange, and I definitely am going to mix brown with and burgundy with this. I'm gonna put a lot of that on there, and um, probably won't use so much of that straight. Let's see what happens when I, because I wanna make a little bit more of a, yeah, that color. That is a very pretty color, perfect. I just mixed a little bit of my burnt umber with my orange, so I made some, a color like in between, basically. Am I still skipping? Tell me if I am, I don't wanna skip. All right, and then lastly, uh, some orange orange. We'll use a little bit of this, but look, it's just in highlight parts, just little bits of it. Okay, and then there's another color that I don't, that's, um, who is it? Procryl does not make this color yet, so I'm going to see if I have it in my, here it is. Uh, there's a warm yellow. There's an ochre. Here, that's another color I need, ochre. Let's do this yellow ochre. You've noticed dark skin is often not uniform over the whole body. Exactly, but it isn't on white people either. It's not, it's not uniform on anyone. Jamie G. Um, look at this back of my hand and the front of my hand. This is much more pink. Right? That's because that's where capillaries are, right? But that's also, I have less pigment on this part of my hand, right? And look at, look at the back of my hand compared to my wrist. This even more red, because again, there's more capillaries, but also because I have a little bit of a tan, and then this part of my skin is different than this part. So it's, it's not about just dark skin, it's about all skin. It's not uniform across the body. Caramo, yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me, I gotta find this warm yellow color. Is this it? That might work. This is close. This is a, you know what? I'm gonna see if I can use, the color that I normally use is the sunset yellow from, or Heartfire. This is a, a warm yellow like this. This is from P3. And I'll show, see the 
the difference. I don't know yet. All these other colors are going to be flat, so we'll see if this works. Oh yeah, that's going to be perfect. Let me see how close this one is. This is Marigold Yellow from Reaper. Ooh, crusty. Marigold Yellow from Reaper. That might be also another good one. That's probably more on the orangey. Ooh. This is what happens when you don't shake your paints. You get all that medium that's at the top of the thing. It separates. Okay, let me shake. My mic is rubbing up against something. Probably my shirt. Is that better? Fun fact, dark skin can have yellow, ochre, play ochre, yellow, pink, or green skin tones. That is true. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, that is bright. I love that. Okay, so this is the difference. This is way more yellow. This is like a bright orangey, and there's another orange. You could probably get away with using the marigold without without the um, the other thing. All right, so, and looks like there is a little bit of peachy on some of the highlights of her skin, but it's a dark peachy. So because of that, I'm gonna do this color right here. This is a, sort of a dark, but it's probably gonna get some glazes of the other colors with it. I may not use this at all. We'll just put that in there. And that is the beginning of a dark skin tones palette. Okay? Now, if you were to paint with other another another ethnicity. Let's say where's my example? Hold on. Let's say you're gonna paint this guy this whole palette would probably get a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, a little definitely more ochre, a lot more tans. And I might choose, but ba what I want you to do when you're painting a skin tone, get a reference, get a reference, get a reference. Diomedes says, why is my mini not here yet? Because I just dropped it in the mail yesterday. <laughs> He's being very impatient. All right, so let me find the little Asian guy. This guy here obviously would not have so many oranges. He'd have more um, ivories, tans, and ochres. So you're gonna build a palette and then you're not guessing, right? Drive it here. Your mom. Thank you most so much for the chance to own your work. All right. So I'm going to start out with some of this dark burgundy. And I'm going to mix a little bit of my dark umber. So I've got some of that red in there, but also some of that brown in there. Okay. I'm going to take my glasses off. Give me one second. And I'm just going to put this into the shadows. Now I could definitely do a full layering. To, I would probably actually do that. I'll do a full layering tutorial for you. I think it's going to be easier to manage. We're just going to base coat everything with this color to start. Okay, got that first leg. I'm using a pretty big brush to to to, to base coat with because it's fast, and I have I have pretty good brush control, so I can manage it. All right, legs are done. Now I'm going to get her belly. Oops. I just noticed she's got a cute little bow. Never saw that before.
How are my kibitzers doing? Diomedes is a kibitzer. Kibitz means to stand around cracking jokes and making comments while someone is trying to work. And she does have under boob. This is an under boob model for sure. That just kingdom death, right? Boob. Does have a little necklace thing. We're just gonna paint over it for now. Get that arm. Oh, we got a subscriber. Mad Goat 06, thank you for the primes, subprime. Hello, everybody in chat. You are a kibitzer, kibitzer. Don't even, don't even lie. Oh man, I just rolled my paint through my, roll my brush through my paint. Mad Goat, I'm gonna write you down on our mat, although I cannot, oops, cannot guarantee you're gonna be in focus. Yeah, not in focus, but that's okay. I like to thank my subscribers who very much help this channel. Every subscription does go back into the channel. Mad Goat 06. Here we go. You can see it. Ah, thank you so much. Oh, yes, by the way, Robosh just did the auction. We've got a new auction going. Take a look at the link. Um, we, I, I posted the link to the, um, we've got a whole bunch of big child models. They're already built. They're part of the, a collection that was sent to me by a friend of mine who worked on the Kickstarter with Big Child. And he said, you know, do you want these models? Otherwise they're gonna go in the bin. And I said, yes, so he sent them to me. And what we've decided to do is auction them off. You bid whatever you wanna bid on them and whoever bids the highest will be um, revealing the bids on next Wednesday. So a week from today, you have until then to make a bid. Um, yeah, see what happens when we call me names. <laughs> so like I said, but there's some really cool models in there. You're gonna, you bid what you are comfortable with. So you could, you could end up with models for a fraction of the price because these are, Secondhand, somebody's collection, we're dispersing to the masses. And also, interested, Big Child is having a contest right now with their models. And so you have to show the model, I guess, before it is painted. I don't know if it needs to be completely disassembled or not. You can check the rules. And I thought either way, we could all paint some Big Child models, models together. Thought it would be cool. No, Diomedes, he's saying all proceeds go to the chocolate addiction. No, that's actually not true. I am not really eating chocolate right now. I'm not supposed to be eating chocolate right now because I'm on a low carb diet, but the, the proceeds do go to help the stream and to help support me in my income and do what I'm doing exactly. <laughs> all right. Let's get back to our regular pro regular scheduled program of oranges and browns. Can you see how dry this is? Because this is a matte paint. Look, it looks very kind of chalky and dry, and I want to avoid that. But there's not much you can do with a, a matte paint. All right, we're going to finish basing this. I think it's just this particular formula. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Don't forget there is a little triangle of skin right there. Everybody who signs up for my Adepticon class is going to get to take home one of these spider silk assassins. Right now, Adepticon is not canceled and they have no plans on canceling um, so long as the state allows them to keep going. 
or the county or whatever that as long as the government doesn't make them close, they're gonna keep up with it. One elbow left. I'm being a little bit too messy. I need to slow down. Could use a smaller brush. Put this last little hand in her face. Okay, going back and touching up spots where it looks like the paint was thinner. All right, we've got our base. Now let's look at our example again. Let's look at our reference. There we go. So basically, the, the, we've painted the, the darkest part of the skin tone, which is up in there. Now, I'm going to choose, probably, let's, let's go with this reddish tone, because I want to put some reds into some of the areas the deeper. This will give depth. Put that into the, and blend it. Just like so. See how that already causes a little bit of depth? That in here, too. Please ask questions, because I know sometimes I'm on autopilot with this, and I want to explain why I'm doing something. So, um, I'm going to put some underneath your boobs. Right now, I'm keeping in mind this is pl th I'm putting this in places where I want a little. Sorry about the camera shaking, guys. My hat keeps hitting it. Um, putting a little extra depth. Do a little dark line right there, with the reddish color. I really like this red. Okay, so then same thing on the inside of the thigh here. Flip it upside down. I think I want that depth. This is the crook of the knee, and I'm putting some in there too, because again, depth. Give me a little, and then blend it on both sides. And I'm using kind of a little back and forth method to smooth things out. Should blend pretty well, because they're, they're both darkish color, but you still don't want, still don't want a crispy line. Oh, I see some questions, good, good. Fabia says, uh, I did not get signed up for your class in time. It made me sad, but I have to try. Fabius, go, when you come to Adepticon, come to the class anyway when it's happening because there's a really good chance that some people might not show up. And even though they're on the wait list, they might not go get around to crediting their classes or whatever. So show up anyway if you make it to the class and have enough seats and enough models, you can still be in it and just bring some cash with you, okay? Thanks for the following, Bishop Odo. Appreciate that. Also, Mac Doggo just followed us five minutes ago. Why am I using orange again? Was it some kind of glaze? Sister Mary, look at why I'm using orange. Oh, crap. I just snapped. <laughs> Her, well, you know what? I'll probably leave that off anyway. It'll be easier to paint. But look at how much orange is on this. If you were to um, just look at just the part, that's why I'm using orange. It's gonna be a part of her skin tone. And what color am I using for shading? I'm using a mahogany. It's got a lot of red tones in it, and so it's gonna read nice and dark, but also give some depth with the red. 
it didn't really it's it's not filling up a ton but we can we can always go in and add some more of the fact let's see if purples might do anything and i feel like the red is not quite dark enough let me see if I mix a little purple with my burgundy, ooh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. Let's see what happens. I'm not gonna put this everywhere. I'm just gonna put this, like I said, in the deepest spots for depth. And I love purple as a shadow tone, not just for dark skin, but for everything. Yeah, that purple looks really pretty. And if I were painting Caucasian skin, I would be adding more blues to our base because of wanting to cool things down. That worked really well, actually. I like that purple. So I'm gonna do that back here again. Let's go ahead and blend that out. Reference did not have purple, but we're painting on 3D, so I wanted to use color theory to give some depth. Right? And I really like the, the red that that purple gives us. A little bit in the small of her back, under her arms. All the places where I would shade on a, on a fair model, I'm gonna shade with a little purple on the darker model. Do a little bit into the hips. Already looking cool. Okay. A lot of questions. Hold on. Amberton says, I told you, you need a bloke, a broke command. I do need a broke command. What were the two original skin tones? The, the first two original skin tones were like a burgundy color and uh, like an umber color. This is like a burnt umber, dark umber. Now in Caucasian spider silk assassin. Yes, it is. What brush? I'm current, <laughs> habeas. I'm currently using a Raphael. The brush doesn't matter. What matters is that you've got a nice sharp, sharp tip. And that's another reason why it doesn't matter what number I'm using is because the tip is nice and sharp. I do, I do think I want to get a smaller brush though, just for the details. Uh, this one is a little bit smaller. This, no, that's a two. Okay, give me a second while I uncover a brush that works. My goodness. There's one. Aha. There we go. That's my zero. Perfect. Yep. It, no, this, it was a Raphael. I like to use Raphaels. I've been not really getting along with Winsor Newtons lately. They are kind of not worth the height. Thank you for following, Lock One. All right, go. Let me get some good light. There we go, perfect. Can you see the purples down here? See the purples now? And I've, I've done it underneath her breasts, a little bit in her belly button, and now we're doing some in the shadows of her hips. Matchstick Man, whoa, I love my ser Series 7. You know what, they used to be great. I don't know what happened, but I feel like the quality has gone down. Matchstick man. All right, so now I took um, my, this was my burnt orange, and I mixed umber with burnt orange to get this kind of brownish, um, orangish color. And this is kind of going to be her main skin tone. This is like her mid tone. 
right? And I'm just, just like any Caucasian skin tone, I'm going to start at the apex of all the highlights. See? Start at the apex where things are protruding, right? So you're going to highlight. And this is with my orangey, orangey color. And the reason why I make these videos is so that when you take my class at Adepticon, again, I'm going to start at the kneecap. When you take my class at Adepticon, I want to make sure that you learn what I'm teaching. If you're paying me money, you're going to come away with something that you're going to be able to use. And even if you can't use it right away, I want you to be able to get your money's worth. So that's why we make this video. So you can go back and search for Doshi's Minis Ethnic Skin Tones after the fact, and you'll be able to remember all those things that you were taught in my class. See how I'm highlighting up that knee and that I'm following the light. You can actually see just like where I've done on other models where I take the light of the overhead light and that's where I'm placing my highlight and it's blending it out. Right? Yeah, see, Amberton says even the Windsor Newton quality has gone down the tubes. Lock one says, Shoshi, it's Martin from Berlin. Oh, wow. Hello. Finally, you're awake for my stream. Oh, good. Gay to steer Martin. Martin? <laughs> Bugging says that may be the case. Windsor Newton 7s are about 10 to 15 years old. Oh, yours are? Whew. You've worn the tip off of some of them. Recently been switching to Raphael 8404. That's what these are. Are they? Wait. 84. Hold on, I gotta look at this. 8408s are what I have. 8404s are better, though. I just have the 8448s. I, I've ordered them by mistake, but I like them. Broken toads are great as well. Danke mir geht's gut. Yeah. Excellent. All right, notice how as that dries, it blends in a little bit nicer now. Again, back to the knee. And it's a cylinder, so just down the front of the leg is our highlight. Think of everything in terms of our um, volumes, right? Cylinders, ear, triangle. Triangle's not a volume. Cone is a volume. I'm going to put, ooh, see, that's too much paint. That. And I'm going to do the top. Because there's a lot more light on the top of her breast than there is the, on the bottom, obviously. Those get a very a higher highlight. Same thing with the arms. Her arms are getting hit by the sunlight, so they're going to be lighter than the rest. Have more reflection. Elbow. So isn't she looking pretty already? Do the top of the hand, so the next to the knuckle, next to the knuckles. And on the shoulder. Now, I'm gonna carefully, I'm gonna take, keep my glasses off while I do her face. Magic Man says, are all these Katie models commission? Uh, your own personal collection, I've been collecting them since the first launch, but I'm scared. I'm going up again, going to end up screwing up the paint job. Um, so these were given to me by Kingdom Death for my class at Adepticon. A lot of the models that I paint are either commission or my personal models. I'm a huge Kingdom Death fan and I paint a lot of them. Hi, Dr. Owens. Bug King. 
Pyramid, sphere, cylinder, or all volumes. Triangles of plane. Yes. Yes, Bug King. <laughs> I had I had an incident yesterday where I post. You can go see the video today. Um, I'm not gonna paint that part of her shoulder because I'm, I'm gonna put her little cloak back. But I had an incident where I posted a video where I used a tube cutter, and I did it wrong. And you better bet that everybody and their mom came to tell me that I did it wrong. It was so funny. I was like, "Yep." All right, thanks, a no now, thanks. <laughs> All right, so there, we have the front of her nicely highlighted, let's do the back. And again, look at where the overhead light is, is shining. You can actually see the spots. I'm putting my brush right there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and smooth that out around there. That's where the Overhead light is causing a natural reflection. I like to use my overhead light as a helper. You can also use your phone camera or your camera camera flashlight to help you with a uh, centralized directional lighting. <laughs> Keeping me honest, yes. Baby says, Katie models are awesome. I'm so glad I'm getting to help Justin with streaming his Katie games now. I have so much love for the models. Cool. Um, Baby is technically that's self-promoting in my channel. We don't allow, but I'm just uh, really good friends with Justin, so I'll let it slide. <laughs> so, uh, Bug King says, you should drop in on me sometime and heckle too. Yes. <laughs> there we go. And then I just kind of skip down to the top of her thigh where it would get more highlight again. And again, it's a cylinder, so we go down the center and then again follow. Looking good. I'm just very thin layers. I've got my web palette, very thin layers, highlights. And not as, so there, this is gonna have a more of a highlight than the rest of her thigh because it's kind of going out, whereas this bit's going in. Same thing with this one. There we go. No problem, Fabius. Like I said, I love Justin. He's great. All right, on his sh on the shoulder. And then, okay, her back has a whole bunch of little highlights on it. And I'm just gonna look carefully where the where the light is hitting them. be a little bit more concentrated. Does that make sense? Because if I blend them too much with the shadows, it's not gonna it's not gonna look right. Alright, let's do the side of the thigh real quick. And over here. And Getting there, and then a little bit on this part of her calf. And I connect that to some of the other highlights too, if I can. All right, so she's starting to look. Let me look at how she looks on camera. Let me see. She's already looking pretty brown. She doesn't. I think I need to adjust my color a little bit. Hold on, let me, because that's not how she looks to me. I missed a tip. I did. I did. Eviston says, dang it, I'm late. 
Wait, where's the tip? <gasps> Locke, thank you so much for the $5. Mad love to you. That's going to go toward our shipping goal this month. We have a giveaway on the 16th. And uh, if we make our shipping goal, it's only $20. We will be able to ship to pretty much anywhere in the world. And we're probably going to give away... What should we give away? It's going to be our subscriber giveaway. Maybe we should give away a painted model. Maybe we should give away a spider silk assassin. I know I've got some other stuff to give away though, so we'll figure it out. I'll have it. I'll have our giveaway on the 16th, which is gonna actually it might not be the exact 16th. Let me check. Yep, the 16th. So next Monday is our next subscriber giveaway. So everybody who is subscribed will be eligible and. Lock one just helped us pay. Yeah, a bit of Gana. <laughs> bitta, bitta. All right, let's see. I, I need to adjust my camera real quick because this settings are a little bit off. I want it to look how it looks to my eyes. Do, let's do um, pass me. Much better. Put brightness down. Much better. That looks that looks how it looks like to me. Okay, we're good. Hi, Figora, how are you? Okay, you want, all right, well, we could do that. Put some emotes in channel if you are interested in me giving away a spider silk assassin painted by me. Because I don't think it would take too long for us to finish this one. Haha, <laughs> Dr. Panda tickets, like, yes, yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's pretty on board with the idea, it looks like. All right, now, we're not done. This is probably where you could stop. If you were gonna do something, maybe tabletop, or it, maybe even, you know, something real quick. This is our next highlight, is we've got this orange color. I'm gonna mix some of it with the, um, make this a little bit more. So what I did was I took my orange, because I feel like that might be too orange. I'm gonna mix a little bit of my orange brown with it. All right, okay, I get the idea. You guys are really excited about having the Spider Silk Assassin be your giveaway. Jen Slim. <laughs> good, I'm glad you're good, Figora. We amidst all the emotes. <laughs> Rumble's like, hi, pipe, hi, pipe, pipe. <laughs> oh wait, is Rumble, Lamunas, and Dr. Panditeca are hyping in the channel. That's awesome. You guys are great. Okay, let's do this orangey color. Now, I didn't do her face yet. That's okay. Now, think about how reflective darker skin is. I'm just gonna put this, see how small I make my highlights? Very small. I don't wanna put too much or she's gonna read as orange, right? But if I don't put a little, She's not gonna have any depth to her volumes. It still looks really orangey. What is happening on my screen? There we go. Okay. I think what it is is the paint looks brighter when it's before it dries. I'm using this extra thin. I'm just really kind of glazing it on her hips. Nice on this little pad of her belly. Put on the knee. Um, a lot more on the top of the boobs because those are getting the most light of everything. But again, small. Think really small. Because you're gonna you're gonna need those those volumes to be built up incrementally by layers.
And when it says bug donated five dollars, yay, we're halfway to our goal, guys. Looks like somebody wants a spider silk assassin. Can't time you out either to delete the chat. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can time out my mods. <laughs> That's too funny. Lumunus and, Mo and Bug King fighting my channel, and they're both mods. Right again on the top of the arm, and look at how lush everything is starting to look. How beautiful. Um, when darker skin gets a lot of like they can they can actually suntan like lighter skin people but it gets this beautiful glow and that's kind of what I'm trying to mimic is this beautiful glow that happens when they get a little bit of sun even though kingdom death doesn't really have sun but we paint different melanins on kingdom death models anyway Kingdom you know, Death is set in a world where it's complete darkness all the time and all they have is these lanterns. So, you know, really none of them should have pigment of any kind at all. But it's a fantasy setting, so we get to do what we want. And it's our game. We get to do what we want. See? Think of these as spheres, right? So each sphere, and they're both going to be on the same side because the light is coming in this direction-ish. So there's the bottom of that. I'm going to connect that sphere a little bit with that. Um, I'm getting kind of crazy with this highlight right here, so I'm going to probably wait for it to dry and then go back to correct it. Correct it with, all, correct it with that base color that I had here and maybe some of this brown plays that right back over the top to blend it together better something is going on with my lighting situation oh I know it my lighting is coming down. Hold on a second. That's better. Yeah. So you can see where my light, there's a shadow of my overhead light. All your commission funds go to supporting people on Twitch. That's so cool. You have a spider soul assassin, assassin from your last year class. You want one from you with your paintwork. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rumble. Rumble said the sun in KDM has a large tentacle. I would not be surprised. He's not telling a lie. That would not surprise me at all. All right, I'm going to take this brown, a little bit of this burgundy. I'm going to glaze this a little bit over this. Because it's... Something is happening with my highlight getting a little too... streaky. That's what was happening. It was getting streaky. I don't want a streaky highlight. Part of why it was getting streaky is I wasn't letting it dry enough in between coats. And so what was happening is that I was swishing it back and forth over and over again, and it was not liking me. All right, so far, so good. Get both of her hips, because she does have highlight on her hips. All right, now, this is where I'm gonna paint this kind of orangey color right here. It gets even more orangey. And this is this is also where we're gonna go two steps up and one step down, sort of. 
but actually we're gonna do this a couple times. So I'm gonna, instead of, instead of using orange orange, I'm gonna use this yellow orange that is kind of a step between the two. And it is Marigold Yellow from Reaper, but don't get caught up in paint names. Just use colors in, with how they look, right? All right, I'm gonna do, ooh. I can get my light. Got shadows. Hold on, something is up. There. Right about there. Hi, Lexi. How are you? <laughs> Thank you so much. Whoa, Jamie G just tipped ten dollars. Thank you so much, Jamie G. We just made. Why does it say? Oh, did we have twenty-five dollars? $25 total. <laughs> all right, well, that'll get everything pretty much in the US. It'll definitely ship all the way to Australia with 25. Um, and then if we have any left over, it'll go toward our um, follower giveaway, which we have around the first of the month. All right, so I'm gonna put my little knee highlight here, and I'm gonna put, again, another little hip highlight. Notice how small these highlights are. They're bright yellow. And look at how small they are because darker skin is more reflective. But highlights are very small. I'm going to focus these very small highlights on the top reflections on her body, like where the overhead light is showing me. Now, you can see those are bright. They're overly bright. So now I'm going to take my orangey brown again, thin it out into a glaze, make sure that's bone dry, and then we're going to glaze that over the top, knock that down just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to show you on her breasts. She's got very, I'm going to use this orangey again. Now this, these highlights are really tiny and they're really bright because these are, these are very small volumes. So you need that contrast, right? Okay, with that and then another one underneath. Gonna look ridiculous at first. Trust me. I'm an artist. I know what I'm doing. All right, let that dry. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of this just orange, and and a little bit of the orange brown. Thin that out. Where's my water? I want this almost to be just. It's real. This is a glaze. This is very watery. Okay. We're not depositing a ton of pigment over the top because I want that yellow to glow through through that oh see that's too much pigment I'll lift that up a little bit that works now it it actually is working for me or I need to let that dry before I can make a decision a little on the orangey side, but it is working. Now I want to do something similar on the other parts of her body. Give me a second. I'm in the middle of a demo. I will look at chat in one second. Okay. Oops. I get a point. Making this part of her hip really bright. Just under her navel to catch that light. See how small those highlights are? And again with the thin watery glaze. Okay. 
I'm gonna go back over the top. Cause it just that thin amount of watery orangey color. And go back and do this over and over again until it looks right, until it dries the right color. And you finally get it. And you need to wait for each layer to dry so you know you're doing it right. See, now it's looking really yellowy, but I'm still waiting for it to dry. A little bit more orangey. I feel like I need to go back and pick that back down a little bit more. Just a little bit more brown. See that yellow, even though it's it's been tamed, it's still let, uh, visible. You guys can see. You're amazed every time you see Shosh paint skin tones. Ah, oh, thank you, E. Henry. Agora, you just got us to our goal. Wow, you guys are so great. Get some hype. Get some hype. Finger dancing. <laughs> Baby says, I eventually I would like to own a Shoshi commission piece. I got to get where I have the funds first. Yeah. Well, we've been doing these uh, blind auctions and people have been getting pieces a whole lot easier. All right. I'm going to go back here with this orange. This, this one right here is a little bit still too bright. Better though. Um... Let me try just this orange. This is just a straight up orange. Maybe this won't be quite as crazy. I'm glazing it. Right? Yeah, that's better. Not as loud as that yellow. Okay, now let's try the the brown again over the top till we just get it just so. Okay, we've got those beautiful volumes. Starting to look a little yellowy. So I want to go back to my brown a little bit and we're gonna glaze some of that. I wanna take a little of this purple. What happens? You know, sometimes I get experimental. What happens if I put a little, little purple in there? Next to that orange, it's gonna create a really beautiful contrast. Pretty. You can glaze a little bit of that purple over the top of that orange and change it. Purple and orange go really nice together, but the yellow is a compliment. I can go back in here, reestablish some of my highlights or shadows with that purple. It's really orangey. So let's go back into our red tones, our burgundy. What happens? A bit. Some of that red. The other thing about red is it makes skin look more alive. It's something Alfonso Heraldes taught me. He is a really fantastic teacher. And if you ever take his color theory class, he, uh, he'll teach you exactly why red works the way it does. Okay, I'm just glazing that mahogany back over that, those orangey tones. I might have put that too much yellow. Better. If you're glazing, you can go back and forth until you get it just the right consistency every time. Yeah, there we go. I need to wait for things to dry. I need to put my glasses back on and look at this from a different view because I've been looking at it too close. I need to see how it looks from farther away. Kind of see how it looks from farther away. Still drying. Yeah, from a distance, she looks pretty awesome. 
think. I need more purples in her shadows, though. Maybe more reds and stuff. I am teaching three classes at Adepticon e. Henry. I'm teaching um, ethnic skin tones, this one. I'm teaching metallic metals, which I um, demonstrated last week. I'm just putting more red into the shadows of her legs here. That looks good. And what else am I teaching? I'm also teaching, um, let's do the booty back here. Mm, okay. I'm going to use that bright orange again. And I'm just going to here. Very small, very small highlight. I don't want it to be too much because then she'll look orangey like she did on the front and I have to, I'll have to tame it back down. Okay, now the brown, the orangey brown color, I'm glazing back over here. Get everything smooth. This elbow can have a little bit of highlight on it. And again with glazes. Okay. A little orangey on the top of the arm. See how bright those highlights are on her breast, but we need something a bit browner, a little bit. That's oh. better. What's next? Um, I'm going to take just this tiniest amount of this red. Fleshy color. I just, I'm gonna try this. I don't know what I'm gonna, what it's gonna do, but I'm gonna put just a tiny bit on her knee. Oh, you know what that did? It made her look real. So this adds realism to her. Just that tiny amount on the kneecap, because guess what? That's where capillaries are. Just a tiny little and a little bit on her belly. This actually makes a better highlight than that yellow. Better. But again, we're just glazing it a little bit. And if we get too high with it, it gets too, too warm. I think I like that better than some of the yellow. But the yellow's still there. Don't, don't do it in place of it, just with it. I really like it on this knee though. Here, just a tiny, tiny little highlight and that makes that gives a little bit of rosiness. Still keeps it dark, a little bit on her elbow. And of course, um, you can go with the if she, if she were to have her hands up, you could do, do a little bit of that color on her palms. Okay. Now, since we're this is just a skin tones video, I'm just going to give you a quick reference with her um, clothing. I'm going to use this ochre here, especially because that's going to contrast pretty nice, I think, with all her other skin.
And let's do a little bit of, whew, a little bit of ivory. My airbrush, ah, oh, I just stabbed myself with my airbrush. I'm gonna use this ivory color for contrast, because look what happens when we do this bone color here. Ooh, that's a good bone color. I mixed that brown with that ivory. You probably won't get this much detail on the outfit with the uh, glass. There's basically two sets of claws that are rounding her waist. And we can go even lighter with the light ivory here. All right, give me one second. I'm gonna look at chat now. <laughs> Nork. <laughs> Hi, Katie Lynch, how's it going? Thank you for following Inventors Asylum. Hello. Glasses are off again. What did I use? I used this ochre color. That's what it was. Cute. I like actually like that kind of pastel yellow a lot on against her skin. That again. I just mixed the ivory and the yellow together. She's looking super cute. Should I just keep painting her? I think we're very close to being done with the skin, actual skin. I do need to paint her face. Every in there. So do you see how this, the skin tones look really come out when you paint the rest of them? Um, do, do this brown on the little claws down here. I stick with the same palette. Now, what time is it? Because we did not, it did not take us that long to paint, and I'm worried that now that I need to do another one. Please do, oh, keep painting it. You like this combo, the dark yellow? Yeah, I like it too. All right, we can keep painting it. <laughs> Let's see. Let's do some yellow and burgundy in the shadows here. And I'm also using the same shadows and the skin tones 
So that purple looks really good as a drop shadow with her armor. See how that just, bam, that yellow and that purple, like, it's, it's deep. Do purple, burgundy, purple. Purple is a better color next to that ivory. So. Keeps the contrast up. Each one of these parts of her armor, it has a little like knuckle. I'm painting each one of them separately. With that ivory highlight. Okay, good. Too much paint on my brush. In the actual class, I may have people do one side dark brown and then the other side light brown. Now, if you were taking this class, would you want to do that? Or would you rather just paint a full model? Which would you rather do? And then also I want to ask chat if you feel like you have a good grasp on other skin tones, not just this particular one. Do you think I need to go over some more skin tones? Because I can do that as well. And then I, what I could do is let people choose which one, faces class. Face class is a different different class. Since Pro Krill are so matte. Yeah, that's a good question. Let's try it. Let's see, um, do I have a varnish? I might use a little bit, actually. Let's see, Lamia Medium would be good if I have that handy. I don't know if I do. That's gloss. I don't want gloss. I want it to be satin. Because you're right, skin is not matte. Um, let's, let's try a little of this Mixing Medium. That might have enough in it to... Asian and Pacific Islanders would be good. So, tell me, first of all, Mark Goodwin, What do you think is the difference between Asian Pacific Islanders? I'm trying to see if you, if you know. Let's see if this looks good. I'm just trying to see what the mixing medium does. Does it make it too glossy? Let's see if it dries satin. Might work. Definitely looks. Gives us some natural highlights from the lighting. Okay, it's drying satin, so that's awesome. So this is mixing medium from Army Painter. But you can use any kind of satin or Lamy medium or anything to kind of go over this and make it look more natural. You can leave it matte as well. I mean, you don't have to do this part. I, I don't think it looked too bad even, even with it. But I, I do like it with it. It's, I don't know. It doesn't hurt. More skin tone classes would be good. 
Would you have time to paint some other skin tones before the class? Have other examples on hand? Yeah, let's, let me see if I have some other ones. Um, be right back, I'm gonna go get it. All right, I have enough models that I can do one more other skin tone. So I'm gonna let you guys, I'm gonna make a poll and I'll let you guys choose. What do you think would be the most commonly asked for? Well, first of all, I wanna get some suggestions from you, then we'll take a poll. Tell me what, what skin tone you would wanna see. Probably Asia. Mark Goodwin says, Asia would be Indian, Chinese, Japanese. Those are so, both three of those are so drastically different. You could really do one for every one of them. Tanned, okay. Katie Lynch says, there's one issue to keep in mind, however, with going from matte slash gloss. If your model's not heavily non-metallic metal, the gloss and the non-metallic technique will clash if not viewed under optimum con conditions. I don't necessarily agree with that, Katie Lynch, especially with skin. I mean, but yeah, I guess if it's bad non-metallic metal, um, but here's the thing. If you're going to go satin, that's realism, right? Non-metallic metal is not necessarily realism. So maybe you have a point there. And so, yeah, maybe do one or the other. Non sheen sheen in Asian tanned. I'm not doing zombie tar tarjan. <laughs> zombie flesh is not an ethnic skin tone. <laughs> this class is for ethnic skin tones. ADM albino Asian really pale. Have a time. So we're doing ethnic skin tones. So non Caucasian. Mediterranean, olive, olive, okay. Let's do a tanned, don't be racist to zombies. Don't even start with me, Diomedes. Not an ethnicity. <laughs> Chinese zombie. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> oh my goodness, all right. <laughs> Let me, let me, let me get a couple references for, I know you're kidding. It's, I'm laughing. I'm, I'm definitely tickled. Let me get a couple more Asian possible um, examples. Hold on. And then, then we'll be able to do that. Painting. So first thing I do is I go to my references and I go painting and then whatever skin tone I'm trying to go for. So let's say, um, and you, if you want to look up oil painting, especially, because then there's recipes. Oil painting, Asian skin tones. Right? And then there's videos also. Okay. So, right away, be a lot of different things. See? Hopefully I won't make the stream, stream skip. I'm gonna find one good reference. Mm. I have to use a makeup tutorial instead. I'm also, yeah, I'm painting a woman, so there's a difference there. All right, oil painting Asian skin tones did not work, so let me just try regular painting. Okay, right. oh, that's better, Florida.
Ah, oh, there we go. There's a YouTube video, how to paint skin tones. That's a good one. Hmm. Let's do um, watercolor. Here we go. Let me try watercolor Asian skin tones because I'm, I'm struggling to find a reference, which can be a thing. Wait, good one. Lots of pinks in that one. Watercolors are great for being able to see see the uh, palette real well for me. Better. I would have, you know what, I'm gonna use the reference that I've already got printed. That will be so much easier. Hi, Mr. Odd. Hi, Araya Arts, how are you? Hello. I think what people m want most on the base of for Asian, Middle Eastern, deep black African, more brown African. Yeah, that sounds like, I mean, well, we can do one more. We have one, we have enough time for one more. So let me take this guy and we're going to make a palette. So I don't want these colors at all. So I'm going to start with a new palette. So I get my reference and that's how I make my colors, right? Hold on a second. Ah. Now, this, this particular ethnic class is um, based off of my other class, my Caucasian, like how to paint realistic skin tones. So if you watch that video, it's like my um, Flower Witch Painting Skin Tones video on YouTube. It's very popular. That will give you some of the basis for, you know, where all of my cool, um, warm shadow tones and everything go. All right, let's start. Whoa, jumping model. Let's pick out colors. So right away, I'm going to be doing a lot of mixing because I seeing colors that are not on my palette here that are not right out of the bottle. So let's see, I need, this is I olive flesh right here from Pro Curl. And you can kind of see everything is bright. Hold on, let me adjust my color a little bit again. Actually, if you have the time, can you explain the color areas between male and female faces? Not for this class, Luminous, this is ethnic skin tones. Sorry about that, we'll do that another time. I'm sticking to the plan. Okay. So I'm mixing, I'm gonna mix some Asian colors. Here, this is golden brown. That's definitely gonna be on my reference. You'll be off now, okay, sister? You have a good one. All right, I need a little bit of olive for this guy. Because not only does he have olive, um, or girl, rather, not only does she have olive undertones, but she has yellow undertones as well. Then I need this dark flesh again. Oops. And probably... I really need like a pastel yellow. Well, put this bright ivory in one, put a little, actually bright ivory will be our next, and a little bit of yellow in that to yellow ochre. Cause I've got golden yellow and yellow ochre and they're different. Not a lot different, but a little bit different. Okay, 
last, I think that's it. I think that's our color palette. Whoa, you can't see that. Hold on. Okay. So I'm going to be mixing. And I'm going to mix out my base color, which is going to be yellow ochre. This lighting is not good. What's going on? There we go. Yellow ochre plus the olive flesh over here. A little bit of ivory. There we go. That's a highlight color. That's a really bright highlight color. I'm going to get a little bit of green in there for some colors. I'm making a little bit of a strip. And then this right here, I'm going to do over here and over here. Over here too. Perfect. A little bit of that green. So see, that's a des desaturated color right there. All right, that. Just mixed a whole bunch of skin tones with this. Right. So now I've got a, basically a whole bunch of colors to choose from. I also need my dark shadows. So my darkest shadow. It looks like it needs to be a burgundy again. I'm going to put burgundy down and we're going to put that green down as well. Okay, that'll be my darkest. But that we're not using that straight. We need to make a we need to make a hand color with that. Ooh, that's very pretty. Perfect. So this is I made a tan with burgundy and with ochre together. All right. I'm deconstructing this using my painting here. I think I'm gonna start with my tan, very brown color against this gray. And I'm gonna put some green. Ooh, that's too much, too much, too much, too much. Some green into the shadows. A little bit of burgundy in there too, so get a, get a brown. Burgundy and green make brown. There's my tan again. The most important thing you can do when you're painting these skin tones is make your palette. Make your palette full of all your colors first. And you can just adjust back and forth over and over again until you get your model to look how you want it to. This is a real pooey color right now. It's not going to be the color it's going to look like at the at the end, though. We're going to layer it up. Their base. Katie says mixing with green to desaturate skin tones works for cupcake icing as well. Really, I've never heard of that. I told a told a friend to do that, and he was very disbelieving, but finally relented and tried to to, to decent success. That's cool. What what kind of cupcakes was he painting that he needed to have desaturated colors? Now, I'm eyeballing Sort of this mid-tone in here, but there is a lot of peach in here that I haven't added in yet. So it doesn't look right just yet. And it's gonna take a minute before it will look right. I'm gonna get everything coated with this brown. A very yellow brown. And the gray has shifted everything as well. The gray is shining up through the paint and causing it to, thankfully it's a neutral color, but.
Once again, I need to take off this tape, but this time it's actually glued on there really well. Oh, I'm going to show you one thing after after we finish this one. There's a little lantern on her hip, and you're going to like want to have the light from the lantern hit her differently than you would. It will be about the same, actually. You can still have the warm light on it. We're all going to be experts at painting spider silk assassins for everybody who's taken this class before. Base coating. Okay. Last elbow and hand. Now we can go on to the next step. All right, so she's looking a little bit greeny brown. That's okay. That's her base color. Now I need to start warming things up a little bit. And I think I'm going to start with this peachy color that has the ivory mixed in it. Maybe put a little bit more ivory. And actually, no, this, this lighter yellow is what I'm going to go with next. That's a little bit of peach in it. Work. I have to knock it back down, I will. That probably needs to be a little bit on the darker end because I went up too much in value. Okay, just like I would with the Caucasian skin tone or the brown skin tone, highlighting. And leaving those shadows. See what a big difference. So this is a, a light, what would I call the super light tan color for this top color. I'm highlighting, leaving those shadows. I need the highlights to be much bigger on this model because her skin is more light. Just a different color light. Really all it is is it's just a different color light. And then I add a little bit of pink, especially for the kneecap. A little bit of this warm color right there. Let me see if you have questions. See if you. Hello, Failer. Cadium lanterns are most furiating thing for you. Oh, Teveston, that's that's no fun. All right, I'm adding a little pink to this. I'm gonna be a little bit more painterly with this one. I think. More canvas like. More pink. So when things start getting real yellow, I need to add that pink back in so it doesn't look dead. Right? She needs to have some life. She already has the yellow undertone. and making a difference.
If you want zombie skin, just do this yellow without adding the pink back in and you'll get it. And then just add more purples and blues for shading. I'm going into the pastel yellow a little bit. I need to. Try not to let that get chalky on me. And if I want her to be pretty fair, that Some of this I'm having to do without explaining because I've not painted Asian skin tones on this small of a model. I painted it on bigger models. So I have more room to kind of work things out. Whereas here, I don't have as much time to get those transitions up. Looking pretty yellow. Hmm, let me see. What we need to add is some burgundy in some of the shadows, I think. Bring that into more of a tan, because yellow and burgundy make that tan, right? You already know that. Stuff wasn't dry and I wore a hole into the model. All right, I need to let things dry because I'm going a little too fast. Tomato, tomato, to Tevistin, yeah. Zombies were people today. <laughs> One thing that can help if you have a flameless candle, hold it appropriately and look at yourself in the mirror and get an idea. Yeah, that's a really, or even just the phone camera, uh, the camera phone. Yeah, this is so chalky. That's because these, these are the flat paints. Where is my medium? Well, that's what we need. We need some modeling medium because well, there's so much uh, white in these paints that they're chalking up on me a little bit. All right, let's try this again. Go slow. This is me trying to go slow. Medium seems to be helping blend a little better. That spot needs, I just need to leave that alone, let that dry. This one is very painterly looking at, at a close up. I know what's missing. I'm gonna get a little purple. There's so much yellow. I need some darker shadows. And um, maybe the purple will help. 
I'm gonna mix, mix it with my burgundy so it's not quite so purple. Now, that is already helping me a little bit. I'm underlining with the purple. Purple and ochre make a nice desaturated color as well. Getting a blend. Or I need a little bit of orange. I think I do. Just a tiny bit of burnt orange. And then we'll mix it. with some of this tan color. There we go. Yeah, that is what she needed, I think. Whoa, I accidentally shrank my window here. Give me one second. Thank you for following Malaga Malaga War Games. Hello. We're going. All right. Things are, things are being a little frustrating for me. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make this Asian gal successful. I might have to do a whole nother stream for her. Well, it's starting to smooth out a little bit. A little bit. Sometimes you got to work certain colors a little more. This was this is one though I wouldn't probably feel that comfortable teaching in a classroom setting if only because obviously I'm not doing the best. She's getting there. I think I need to slow down and not just not be so hard on myself. There, that orange, yes. Just needs that little tanness. That's what she needed. Let me see. Uh, you want to you want to hear a song? Which song, Malaga? You want to hear? Um, let's do the Japanese metal since that. Uh, since we're doing that. Yeah. Hang on one second. I'll switch it to Japanese metal for you. Okay, here we go. How's it going? Starting to take a, take shape. I think I'm gonna get out my umber. Where does it go? That's black brown. There's my darker umber. I'm gonna see what happens when I mix that 
with a little bit of my, nope. I'm gonna take this orange and this ochre and make a light orangey ochre and then my ivories. There, there. All right, I'm glazing it all the way up. There we go. Took me a second, but now I'm getting it. He's definitely feeling a little bit more tanned, I think. Lots of greens on her undertones, even though they're desaturated. Let's do the um, burgundy right here. I'm gonna do the burgundy under all of my underlining. Finally got it. Yeah, that feels much more Asian. And then the burgundy in between the legs. And then on her bust bandage, whatever we call it. There we go. I'm going to paint this one dark. Whole thing first. That looks really good next to that skin tone. Okay, now that I got some of that in there, I can do some highlighting with my ivory. It took me a long time to work out the base though. But I think it's working. I'm using ivory as my main highlight here. So there was a lot of orange. There's burgundy. What do you think? You see that? Let me take a look with my glasses on. Nice. Oh, hell yes, QDM. Equus Stenchman. Money Baines, hello. Okay, so this is, these are the two. You can see them next to each other. Wait, I need to adjust my lighting. Hold on. Let's do the uh, cam overhead probably. All right, it's probably because this is throwing things off. Get this out of the way. sort of something is off when it comes to let's try white balance that does better keep the white balance on and see what happens let's see if i can smooth this out a little bit more very nice thank you i really appreciate that we've been struggling with her a little bit i'm going to use a little bit of that medium Get that. And now my 
ivory. What do you guys think? Did I try to teach should I try to teach myself this a little better and then try to teach it at the class? I figured this is bonus content if you're not if I don't end up teaching it on the class. Right? Oh, she's very yellow. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this peachy color. This is the peachy color we had from before. I'm gonna add that onto the kneecaps. Right, because that's where the capillaries are, a little bit around the belly area. One of the biggest differences, I think, with the Asian skin tones is I don't have the blue cold tones as much. I put in some purple and some burgundy. But I would say I don't so much have... Let's add a little bit more brown in there. I wouldn't have the uh, full tones. I feel like it might need a little bit of blue. I feel like if I, if I go too blue, it'll go it'll go toward Caucasian. Maybe we'll do purple instead. Better. Yeah, that's actually a lot better. Mm-hmm. Add that red on there, on that, and then you just paint over the top of that red, but you leave some of the edges. You can get that bright contrast of the bandana of bandages. Like this. One more. That looks cool. That looks really cool. All right. I would say I would be happy with this as a beginner, beginning stages. You might want to clean up a little bit. Anyway, there's there's my ethnic Asian, very similar to Caucasian. However, I've left out a lot of blues, and I've added in some burgundies, some purples, and there's my darker darker melanin gal. Um, and so there, that's we're gonna go ahead and switch out. You took ridiculous steps to have decent lighting for Adepticon. That's good. You should work on having lighting for Adepticon. Let's take a look and see who else is um, streaming right now. I'm going to raid. You guys can stick around while we raid somebody awesome. And I will, I will definitely work out some kind of recipe for my Asian skin tones before the class because I do think it would be helpful for anybody taking that class to be able to get a better demo than what I just showed you. <laughs> that was the first time I've demoed Asian skin, so you guys got to see it, see it live. All right, let's see who's online. We haven't raided Toluca paints in I don't know how long. Let's do that, okay? Painting Warhammer. Gonna raid Toluca. Oh yeah, that's cool. He's got a real cool nergly guy. We're gonna raid him. Go ahead and punch that raid button. Say um, say hello from Shoshi's, uh, Shoshi's Minis Painting Channel when we get over there. And uh, we will be back on Friday. Don't forget about the auction, which uh, you can go to my page. Somebody do exclamation point auction in there. Okay. All right, I will see you guys on... Um, <laughs> There you go. Thanks, Tevison, who punched the auction thing. I will see you guys soon. We're going to raid now. Bye, guys.